Gen Con 2019, I did what I almost always do at Gen Con, which is to ignore everything new at Gen Con. I am instead immediately switching over to Spiel mode. Gen Con's over, I can't preview anything more for that fair. Games are on the market, people are gonna start talking about them. I'm going to look ahead at what's coming out at Spiel. Yes, I have three months to prepare for that convention, which has roughly twice as many new games as debut at Gen Con. Yeah, rough numbers, it's hard to really figure what's new in a particular market. But there are roughly twice as many things to talk about at Spiel, so that's what I was doing. Meeting with publishers, talking with them, getting advanced copies in some cases of what they plan to release, and trying to stay on top of what's coming. So I met with Horrible Games, for example, an Italian publisher that was debuting The King's Dilemma at the show, but they were also previewing their Spiel release, a very small deduction game called Similo, which exists in two editions, Fables and History. The designers are Hjalmar Hawk, who works with Horrible, Pierre Luca Zizzi, and Martino Ciarchiria, names that I need to practice a bit more because I do not have Italian pronunciation down. Similo is for two to any number of players. However many people can see the images that you're playing on the table. They are cooperative deduction games and they work along the lines of Liebelid Games, Dixit, Mysterium, Shadows Amsterdam, Obscurio. Liebelid has done a lot of those releases where you are trying to convey information to players based on a played card. People look at the image on that card they have to make deductions and do something with that information. And Similo works that same way, but on a much smaller scale. Similo Fables and Similo History are independent games, but they play the same way. So learning how to play one of them will let you learn how to play the other as well. Each game consists of a deck of 30 characters. Whoever is going to be clue giver for the game looks at one of those characters, puts it together with 11 more cards at random. They shuffle those cards and then lay them out in a grid. And your job as guessers is to find that character from among these 12. So organize these so they all fit on camera. And now I can give clues only by playing other character cards from my hand of five. So I look at my cards, I determine which one I wanna play, and maybe I say my character is similar to Little Red Riding Hood. You have to look at the 12 cards on display and remove one of them that you think is not my character based on me saying my character is similar to Little Red Riding Hood. You don't know what I have in mind, why I'm playing this card and what is similar about Little Red Riding Hood to my character you just have to remove one card that is not like Little Red Riding Hood, based on whatever you think I have in mind. So maybe you say, well, Alice is safe. She's a young girl in Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, she's got a hood, of course. Hmm, maybe Magnifico is okay, and the Mad Hatter and Aladdin and Huntsman. I'm not sure. Uh, three little pigs, they live in the woods. Uh, little Red Riding Hood lives in the woods. Captain Hook, let's, let's go with him. He's male, he's an adult, not a child. He lives on the water, not in the woods. So I turn him, can we remove him? And if I agree, yes, that's okay. Then he is out. I refill my hand the five cards. I play another card. And now I give another clue. Maybe I turn mine sideways now and I say, this character is not like the Little Mermaid. So, is like Little Red Riding Hood, is not like the Little Mermaid. You have these two combining pieces of information, and now you have to remove two cards. So, you decide, okay, which two we're gonna remove that are like this one, but not like Little Mermaid. Uh, maybe we can remove the Sea Witch, right? Because Sea Witch is from the same story as Little Mermaid, and they have little descriptions along the side here if you're not familiar with some of these characters I did not know Mangio Fuko who's the evil puppeteer in Pinocchio, The Adventures of Pinocchio you gotta go back to the fairy tales here and not just the Disney stories although the Disney stories will definitely resonate with you and come to mind uh, not like the Little Mermaid so maybe not like the Sea Witch and not like Alice I don't know 
And if I say, okay, cool, then you know you have not removed my character. I'm gonna play another card. You have to remove three. I'll play another card and you remove four and that will leave only two characters, assuming that you have made no mistakes and have not removed my character from play. There will only be two left available when I play a fifth card on the table. If you remove the proper character and leave only my chosen character behind, then we win. If at any time my character is removed from play, we lose the game. As you can tell from the description, Similo is very similar to Dixit and Mysterium where you're trying to convey information only from images. The other people, the non-ghost, non-clue giver, have to interpret the card in whatever way they want. They talk about it as much as they want and finally they have to remove characters. The gameplay is extremely simple. Games run anywhere from one minute to 10 at the most, depending on how thoughtful, uh, how much debate goes on. Uh, whether someone makes a mistake in the early turns and just removes your one character right away. That is often easy to do with the horizontal clues, which mean that your character is not like this one. Because often the people who are going to remove cards say, oh, we have to remove characters that are not like this one. It's like, no, my character is not like that one. So you want to remove characters that are very much like this one. It's just a little mind shift and I've seen it over 10 games played with four different groups where you just have to make that mind switch that the horizontal clue means remove cards like this. If you do the vertical one, which my character is similar to this one, remove cards that are not like this. Remove cards like this, not like this. Okay, it's very straightforward, very simple. Quick gameplay, it's fun. Uh, there is a lot of Disney resonance with the fairy tale or fable version of this game just because so many of these stories have been made into Disney films and so you're picturing things along those lines. It's not essential. And of course, it's very different look to the game with illustrations by Nyad. Awesome. The game is all about the art. That is what's the important part here. And so you've got these characters that don't necessarily line up with these Disney versions of things. And it's interesting to see. And of course, that just comes probably from a European perspective, which is different from uh, my US centric uh, Disney fied history of the world. Yes, everything's been filtered through that lens. So you're looking at things slightly differently. You have to actually look more at the cards themselves and what is the clue giver trying to say based on that particular card. The history one provides a completely different challenge. Similar histories is different from similar fables, not because of the gameplay as that is identical, but because of the different set of references that is going to come to mind when you look at these characters from history compared with what you might be familiar with from fairy tales and Disney movies. I did not recognize all of these characters when I've played. I did not know who Boudicca was, but I happened to play with a family that had lived in the UK and they immediately were like, oh yeah, queen of this Celtic tribe who fought against the Romans. So they all knew that. I did not. Thankfully, every character has a brief history or description on the side so that you have some context for who they are in case you are not familiar with them. Gameplay again is identical. The clue giver is going to look at their hand. They give a card. My character is similar to Mary Shelley in some way. You just have to now eliminate one card that is not similar to Mary Shelley. I refill my hand. My character is not like Moctezuma. How? Up to you to determine. You decide which two you want to eliminate. And again, if you get down to leaving only my character, then we win the game. How we combine these two games is you lay out the 12 characters from one set and then you give clues based on the cards in the other set. So if you had both of these, you could lay out these cards. I'm going to look at the fables and I'm going to say that my character is similar to the fairy godmother. How? That's up to you to decide. What do you think? Which one of these characters is least like the fairy godmother? And then you can remove a character. Ideally, you don't remove mine. Uh, maybe my character is like the big bad wolf. Yes. Now you have to remove two. It works the same way, except now you've got these different overlapping reference fields in which to give clues. 
and it provides a very different experience. I played Simulo about 10 times on the sample copies given to me by Horrible Games at Gen Con 2019, both in the Fables and the History version. Uh, success rate is about three quarters. I don't think we've been exactly uh, standoffish in our clues. I played several games with young kids, so the kids would give a clue and they'd be like, well, I'm not quite sure about this one, or, oh yeah, this, this is right on the nose. You just have to look right. Yeah, they're giving clues while they're playing the cards. So they're not being sort of distant judicial figures that just issue something from a slot. It's all there in their face at the same time as they're giving the clue. Okay, that's part of the game. That works out fine. Everyone's cool with playing it that way. So we play it that way. You can imagine the Similo framework, the game shell, existing in all types of manners. You start with fables and history, well those are just examples of what you can do, but you can imagine country specific versions, so Similo US, Similo Italy, Similo France, everything specific for a particular country and marketed in that country, and then of course you can combine them in interesting ways. Uh, licensed version with Similo Marvel and Similo Harry Potter and Similo whatever you want. You're gonna have all sorts of different possibilities for this game line, depending on how horrible games comes out with it. And it's an interesting, easy challenge. We played it at the dinner while waiting for things to be served, and just played it very casually, played it on the fly. It's a very tiny game that's gonna be sold in a Tom, Top Trump style plastic package. So perfect for the backpack. You just play on the go. Games last one to 10 minutes. I don't know if there's necessarily a, a strong challenge here. Sometimes things work out perfectly, where the Fables deck, for example, has Puss in Boots and Cheshire Cat as two of the 30 characters. And in one game, Cheshire Cat was the thing that I had to get the person to guess. And Puss in Boots was in my first hand. My character is similar to Puss in Boots. And from there, the character is just like, this is clearly Cheshire Cat. I know this, and we played it out anyway, and he was correct. So sometimes it seems like there is a straight through line from you know beginning to end. Lots of other times there isn't. And what's kind of weird, I don't know if it's weird, disappointing, maybe it's just the people I've been playing with. I've played with four different groups in these 10 games, but I've seen consistently where lots of times the clues just boil down to gender. I play this woman vertically. My character is similar to this. And so you eliminate guys and I play a guy my character is different from this guy. Okay, so we're going to eliminate more guys and just get down to there. So it's it's a little disappointing, and I don't know whether it's just because of the groups I've been playing with or the way we've been thinking, or it's just that's the most binary type of removal system that exists. And so it makes me wonder what other concepts you might have that would work that would not fall along those lines. We have Similo Met, where we just have works of art from the Met or something along those lines. Or you can, again, codename style, work with this game shell in any type of content. The two are kind of separated from the two where the game system works and you fill it with whatever you want. So I can imagine things along those lines where you get away from that sort of clear cut aspect, or maybe you just have uh, Similo women. I don't know if that would be weird or not. Similo men, you get enough cards and you can divide them out however you want, except that they have different backs. So you can't just shuffle them together and make a deck that way unless you sleeve them, which of course people might do in time depending on how long this series go and how many actually exist. I don't know what the plans are, but clearly the framework is there for any number of other iterations to come in the future for a quick little game that you can take pretty much anywhere and play quickly with any number of people after a one minute instruction. That's pretty good guidelines there uh, for inexpensive, quick playing, low rules, get people going instantly. The challenge now, of course, make people aware of the game. If you're going to have something successful, it's going to be marketed, it's going to be made aware of things. I realize this is going far beyond just sort of the overview of the nature of the game, but often when you look at a game, you're looking at, at least I'm trying to look at this, this larger context of everything, not just the game itself, but sort of its place in history and how it's going to 
function on a on a broader market what sort of success it's going to have how well it succeeds not just in terms of game design but also the artwork and the packaging and the marketing and the presentation and everything that's going to go on here just how well is it going to work on the broader markets and it's kind of interesting to think about that because the framework is all there the game structure works perfectly with the sort of guessing narrative that's going to play differently when you play it with different people so it's the same game but we'll have a different experience depending on who the guessers are and who the clue giver is i've played with eight-year-olds giving clues and with uh, older people giving clues and it works out differently just based on how they think about things and what is similar to one person versus another. So it's got a lot of interesting things going on in an extremely small package. Well, that's it. Overview of Similo.